Now we're going uh, to talk about JSON specifically. JSON is a schemaless, meaning it does not have a schema. Every time you get a message, there can be a different set of fields, and every field can have a different type anytime you want. And it is a textual serialization format, meaning we as humans can read it. It has a nice advantage that you can view data in transit. They can look at the, the response from an HTTP server. You just understand what's going on. This is great, but we pay a price. So the price we pay is that there is more bytes on the wire when we use this kind of serialization format. If you look at, let's say, binary formats, let's say protocol buffers, from my experience, protocol buffers is between a third and fourth the size of the same JSON message. And since we pay by bandwidth, uh, this is money. But the big advantage of JSON is that almost every language speaks it. Right? So once you do JSON, including the browser, right? JSON, JavaScript, object notation, it comes from JavaScript, uh, it can work with it. Now, JSON have uh, specific types, right? So the passenger count here is three. This is a number. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, car ID, which is a string. We have tags, which can be, uh, uh, it's a list in JSON. Uh, we have Booleans, we have null. Uh, but these are the types that JSON defines, and we'll talk about them. Some types are missing, right? So we have the types that the format define, the JSON formats define, and we have the types in Go. And in Go, for example, we have a time to time, in databases it's known as a timestamp, in Python it's a daytime. Well, every language has it. In JSON, there's no shots. So you see that the start time on the message is actually a string. And now I need some external knowledge about the message saying, hey, this comes in as a string, but you should actually convert it into a time to time. And, and this is what I talk about uh, schemaless also, that there's no schema. I don't know. I need to know from the outside, what are the expected types for that? And there's something like JSON schema and other things, but it's not built in in the format. All right, and schema again, schema lets you move fast, but in the long run, having uh, no schema is usually a recipe for error. Okay, so what are the types? In JSON, uh, we have these uh, three types that are defined, six types, sorry, not three, six, that are defined by JSON. So we have a string type, and this is mapped to a Go string. This is easy, right? Until you find out that JSON in a field that is usually a string can have a null, which is great, but there's no null strings in Go. We have just the empty string. A string cannot be nil. This is not something that we have. So even this simple mapping can be a problematic. In JSON, we have a single type of number. And that's it. We don't have any more numbers. In Go, we have nine, ten num type of numbers, right? We have the two kinds of floats. We have four kinds of ints twice. So this is 10. Uh, we have also uh, complex, two complex numbers, so actually 12 kind of numbers. And the question is, what, what are we going to do, right? We got a number from JSON. How do we know the type that is going to be? Uh, and if you're using a struct, then you go is for aware of the field type and it will try to, to do it. But if you don't say anything, if you just give it any, then go is going to uh, use float CTP. We have booleans that goes to uh, go boolean type. We have null, nothing which goes, goes nil. And as I said, it is problematic because in JSON, anything can be uh, null, but in go, not. And then we have arrays in JSON. Arrays are a sequence of things. Um, and either it's some kind of type and go right natively, we can have a slice of only integers or slice of only strings. We cannot have a slice with integers and strings both inside the same thing. Um, and in JSON, this is pretty popular. In case that we actually do have different types in the same JSON array, we are going to use a slice of any which can contain these types, but now working with that is really, really hard. Or not hard, but really annoying, right? Because we need to do uh, type assertions all the time to move it to the right. And 
dusting we have in JSON is an object. This is a thing with the curly braces that we used to see. And in Go, we either map it to a struct, which is what we usually do, or we can map it also to a map, and this is map of strings. So the strings are the name of the fields in, uh, in JSON, well, the members in JSON, and the any, meaning it can be anything. And working with map from string to any, it can be really frustrating, especially if you have nested JSON objects, and then you need to take one of them and convert that also to a map of string of any and continue there. This is not really fun. So we prefer to work with structs, and we'll see that later. Uh, two things that are missing, I talked about uh, time dot time. This is missing. The JSON encoder and decoder by default uh, convert and read time in RFC 3339 format. Which we have the example there. If, if you have a struct with a time uh, field, Go is going to uh, serialize the JSON as a string. But if someone else, let's say Python code, is uh, consuming that, they need to know that this is a string, but actually this should be a time, this is the format I needed. Uh, so uh, there's a question, does Go want us to avoid an array of mixed types? Yes, this is not just Go. Most languages, most statically typed languages, they don't like mixed types. You can do it with the, the setting with the slice of any, uh, it is possible, but you're bypassing the type system and you need to do type assertions, which is not usually fun. And the second thing that is missing from JSON is binary things, right? We don't have binary uh, in databases. We have blobs. In Go, we have this byte slice, right? Which can be an image or uh, anything else that might be binary. And the Go decoder and encoder also handle that. What they do is they convert this binary type to a string with what is known as a base64 encoding. Base64 been around for a long, long time, comes from email. An email when you add an attachment, actually being converted to a base64, and then being sent because email is also a textual uh, format. Uh, so for example, the string go is going to be encoded to the string r28 and equals one. That, that is how it's going to be. But again, here, the other side need to know that this is what go is doing. So if I'm sending from Go to Java. Java says, okay, I got a string, but now I need to use Base64 to convert it back to, let's say, an image if I need to work with that. So this is the type conversions that we have between uh, JSON and Go. And most of the time it works really well. Other types are not supported, right? So if you have your own types uh, that are not structs, maybe a linked list and other things, Go is going to convert them, but it's usually not going to do what you think it should be doing. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit later on about how you can say this is the type and I want you to serialize it as something. Question about blobs. So JSON, I said JSON, the format does not have binary types. So if I want to pass, let's say, user with the icon of the user to uh, someone to display, I cannot send the icon, which is an image, as a binary thing. I, I need to convert it somehow to a string and then, then move it on. And this is what Rob is doing with the, this. Okay, so the D library that we have is in the standard library. It is called encoding JSON. And it has an ability to work with bytes or with what we call files in Go or readers and writers. So if you go from JSON to Go and what you have is basically a sequence of bytes, then you are going to use the json.unmarsh. And if you have bytes in Go and you want to convert them to JSON, you're going to use json.marsh. If you have a reader, uh, for example, an HTTP request body or maybe an open file, and you want to read JSON from it, now you're going to use the decoder, or to create one, you're going to use json.new decoder. And if you want to write JSON, let's say to an HTTP response, or maybe to a file, again, you're going to use the new encoder this time. Now, the coding JSON has some um, it, it's, it's very relaxed in the way that it handles decoding and encoding. So if you have an incoming message and you want to save it, or you want to decode it into a struct, if there is some member of the JSON object that is not found in the struct, it's, the encoding JSON is not going to fail or return an error, it's just going to ignore it. Other way as well, if I have something in a struct, 
that is not found in the JSON, the Go encoder is not going to, to do anything for you. Right, and this is going to cause us a problem. We're going to talk about it later, about zero versus missing value. But basically, unknown fields and unknown members, the Go uh, encoding JSON just ignores them. It's not going to be a thing. Um, because in Go, you have to work with exported symbols or spotted fields in your struct. Encoding Go has some assumptions about how to match names in JSON that are usually lowercase to exported symbol that start with an uppercase. So I, if I have a, a struct with a field called name with start with an uppercase N, and in the JSON there's going to be name or lowercase, encoding.json knows how to do the match and actually fill the name in Go that start with a capital letter from the lowercase name that there is. Right? So let's say that I have a, a like. Think about a social network, someone clicked a like on a, some kind of a post. So the struct itself has a post ID and then the login of the user that clicked on the like. Uh, so I'm uh, creating a, a request. And now I'm using this bytes API where uh, I'm going to use JSON.Marshall, and now data is actually a sequence of bytes. And now I can do whatever I want with these bytes, write them, send over the network, store them in the database. That's up to me. But this is just working with bytes. And this is encoding, or as we call it, marshalling. When we do decoding or unmarshalling, here I'm choosing the other side of things. So I'm going to work with an IO reader. So I'm wrapping this data with the bytes of buffer. Now I'm creating a decoder on the buffer. And then I'm using decode on a new like, and I'm going to print it out. If you're going to run the code, you see that I'm getting the same thing that I sent. Right? So I marshal to JSON, and I marshal back, and this is coming like this.